Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to assemble a digital MDM from Matrix, Parker Porter Matrix. We have our five-legged stand. What's important when we're assembling the five-legged stand is that we line up the bottles to the base of the stand. Now, when it's shipped to you, you have this separate, and this is all manufactured as one piece. Okay, now what's important is you see these little concaves. These are the the tanks are going to line up. This is where the tanks are going to line up. And this is what's important when you actually set, set this thing down on its legs. You want to try to just make sure that you know each concave is going to be sitting in between two wheels. You see how that's sitting there? Once that's in place, it actually gets tighter with time. Now, once that is done, at least this, we're actually going to assemble the head. Now, the head, when it comes in, is basically shipped to you like this. Okay? On the bottom side here, you have two caps. You're going to have these caps on the back. This is where this is going to screw on to the top here. This, while we're here, we're going to actually do a little walk around. This is a pop-off valve. This pop-off valve, if ever there's any obstruction, no more gas flowing to the patient, this valve is what's going to pop open and have them breathe air from the room. Okay, so when assembling this, it's always good to actually put on your scavenger control block. Now this is sometimes is sold as an option. Most of the time they come with it, but this mounts to the side of the unit. What this does is actually controls the amount of vacuum that's going to be delivered to the nasal hood. Now, this is where you're going to lower and increase the amount of flow. This is where the vacuum line to the patient is going to be hooked up. But in the back, you have here two options. This one here is actually set up to have a high volume, just slip on there, open it up all the way. Or if you want to have it actually hooked up in a different way, we supply. We supply this barb fitting as well. Now this barb fitting would screw onto the back here with some Teflon. And again, this is where you would put a saliva ejector tubing on there and actually hook this up to whatever vacuum source you wanted. So you have an option, either hook it up this way or 90% of the time, it's always gonna be this fitting here and you just take one of your high volumes and slide it on the end of this. To assemble this to the head, very simple, line it up. You got two screws. Two screws. Slide in through here. Another one slides in through here. This is where you're going to use your famous flat screwdriver. No drills. You don't want these things breaking off on the inside of there. And just snug that up there. Now if you could see that this is just a different part of the machine but it has nothing to do with the actual machine it's all independent of itself and just snug those puppies up there like that now the machine is basically ready to put on top of the stand and again this is the way it's going to look this is where your mixed gases is going to come out this is where your breathing bag is going to be this is where your scavenger your vacuum line is going to hook up and this is how you're going to control the amount of vacuum you want to have to your nasal hood. All right, so now you just take this thing, line that up, and just screw that right down on top of the stand. Like so. Screw that thing in. Screw that thing in there like that, nice and snug. Now, there you go. Now once that's screwed in, you want to have your head of your nitro bag actually being put on this side where you hang your rubber goods and a little pull handle and move the cart around. Okay, so once that's done, on the back side here, I have a couple of connections here. So where we're going to plug in our power, and just below that is there's a fuse. This is if there's any, any issues, we actually have a couple of fuses in there for the unit. 
This is a ground cable. In some cases, you'd have to ground this, but dental office is not usually that case. And here we have our oxygen inlet, 50 PSI. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our oxygen tube and screw that right on there. Okay, screw that right on there like that. Once that's screwed on, a 9 16 key, sorry, 11 16 key would snug that up. Don't over tighten, you don't need to. It seals with just a, a light snug. These are connections that are specially made for that. And since I was actually here doing that and I have the key in my hand, I will just go down to the bottom of the unit here and just make sure that one's snug as well. Now this one is actually connected connected to a um, oxygen regulator. So the high pressure is coming into the stand. Coming out here is regulated 55 PSI. Going in at 2000, coming out at 55, okay? Now, once that's done and we know everything's snugged up, we're going to do the nitrous line. The nitrous line, totally different connection, safety reasons. Nothing will connect, to, you know, unless they're not made for each other. So nitrous goes on here, nothing to worry about. You can't mix anything up. And this is going to be our nitrous mix, uh, nitrous gas that's going in. And again, this one just screws on. You can hand screw it on there. Once she's tight, just snug it up with a little key. It's going to be a... 7 8 key go on there snug it up that's it and again since we have this key in our hand let's go down below on this pressure regulator and just make sure that's snugged up there that's done so we know that's all good this third we got to keep this cap on here this third one is an outlet if ever you wanted to have an oxygen mask or any other type of oxygen operated device you can actually hook it up to this. Um, this is basically giving you another outlet, oxygen outlet, okay? So that's basically it for the back of the machine. We're gonna go ahead to the front. Setting up the scavenging unit. We have a standard breathing bag, okay? This is where this is gonna go. We're gonna pop off this red cap down below here, the bottom of the unit. It's where our breathing bag goes. We're gonna take our breathing bag, two fingers like this, just slide that thing right up on there like that. Once that's hooked up, we're good. Over here. This is where our mixed gases is gonna come out. Okay, look at the scavenger. Again, we can't really mix these two up. We got a big one and we got a small one. Okay, so our mixed gases are gonna hook up here, like so. This one is our scavenging gap vacuum, so we're going to hook that one up here. Now, when setting the vacuum levels, uh, we don't have vacuum running in the office here, but uh, when setting your vacuum levels, you just got to make sure that you're in the green. And usually I keep it just be between the red and the green area here um, and just monitor it. Once you set that up, usually the vacuum levels never change in your dental office, so you're pretty much uh, good to go. And rule of thumb, if you hear vacuum, you're good. If you don't hear vacuum, then there's a problem with your scavenger, right? That's that. If you look at the other end of the scavenger <coughs> and the nasal hood here. We have this. Okay. Matrix. Upright. So when it's on the patient's face, it's sitting like this. You got matrix in that position. Okay. And again, if you look, follow your hoses, this is your mixed gases here. Your mixed gases coming up here. And if you look at this end here, this is where your gases are going to come out. Now, if we take this apart, you'll see that this end, there's no vacuum on it. This end here <coughs> is your actual mixed gases that are going to be coming out of here. So your mixed gases are actually going to flow into the nasal hood here. Okay. And after that, when the patient exhales, it's going to open up that diaphragm over there. And he's going to blow out into this channel here which is gonna be picked up by your vacuum here. So that's pretty much how that works. Now, changing your nasal hood may be a little difficult the first time, but after that, it's kind of simple. So let's just take this apart. This is basically your tubing. Um, you can wipe this down, disinfect it if you would like. 
Uh, this is autoclavable. You can pass through an autoclave if you want it to. You can also put a sheet on it if you want as well. Um, but when it comes down to this, this is the blue nasal hoods are always autoclavable. And this is your nasal hood cap. This is not autoclavable. But when you're assembling the nasal hood, this goes into your autoclave. Okay, you can use a large size Tutnauer or you can put it in a statum if you wanted to. Um, what you do is you could take, take this cap and again, as it would be sitting on the patient, you line up your matrix, not upside down, but the right way, like this. Once that's lined up like this, put your two fingers inside of the hole, turn around and slide that puppy on. So basically, if you want to start lined up like this, and then you're ready to go, okay? Once that's done, you take your, your, rubber, your rubber tubes, make sure they're all nice and straight, not tangled, because you'll regret it afterwards. And you take your tubes and you just line them up with your two inlets here and push. Push them on. Once you're lined up, boom, boom. Simple as that. And again, line up, line up, push, and push. And you're good to go. Okay, Matrix does have a nice assortment of disposable nasal hoods out there. If you wanted to use them, they're a little bit softer and they do have scents in them. So it's kind of easier to get them on a patient, especially young patients. Awesome office, awesome scavenging unit. Breathing bag. Vacuum tube. Mixed gases. Vacuum control block. This is where you're going to control your vacuum. Okay, so let's roll this thing up and move on to our tanks. <coughs> what I'll do is I'll just remove this for now, get it out of our way. <coughs> Sorry. A little bit on nitrous and oxygen. Nitrous and oxygen. The oxygen tank is actually very light. The nitrous tank is very heavy. The reason being is nitrous is a liquid. Oxygen is like a gas form. This is what, what happens with nitrous is sort of like a barbecue, right? It's full of liquid. And what we're doing is we're breathing off the vapor, breathing off the vapor, breathing off the vapor. So you'll see that your nitrous is gonna last a lot longer than your oxygen. But what happens is your oxygen actually depletes as you're using it, this does not. <coughs> this will actually deplete in pressure once there's no more liquid. When there's no more liquid, we're going to be draining off all this gas. Once this gas is gone, that drops off and boom, we have no more nitrous oxide. Another thing that's very important is this tagging system. Okay? This is very important. When you put them on, they're going to all indicate full. When you have one in use, you have to remove the tag full and it'll be in service. And the English side would be in use. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Once this tank depletes, it's there, we're gonna tear off this one, and then the tank will be list listed as empty, and that's when we'd go over to the next one and actually tear it off, and then this one be in use. If this is forgotten, <coughs> we're gonna be sending full tanks back to the uh, gas supply company. Now, as we talked about before, there's safety here. You cannot mix oxygen and nitrous. It's impossible. All the nitrous connections are always going to be this size, and nitrous and oxygen are always going to be this size. Well, you have the same kind of safety features built into the stand, and it's a standard throughout North America. Your nitrous oxide systems actually have a key. This key is going to line up with these two pins here underneath. Okay? What's really important is to make sure that this little o-ring here is there. See? Comes off very easily. It drops on the floor very easily. All right, very important. Now, this o-ring can end up sticking to the bottle when you ship it out to get recycled to get replenished. Um, be careful that that doesn't happen because these little things, they don't cost anything, but they they kind of cost a lot when you have a big gas leak so make sure that's in place there okay and then your nitrous nitrous oxide you would just lift this thing up 
and rest it in those two pins. And you'll see it'll just slide right in there. Boom. Once it slides in there, it actually holds itself up there. And then you just turn this thing over to the top and tighten that thing down nice and snug. Like so. That tank's installed. Okay. Oxygen, same thing. Come over to this side. Take this oxygen tank. And if you notice, we have our keys here. Much more spread apart. Much more spread apart. And these are standard keys. You can't mix them up. So again, you would take this one. You slide it up onto the cart and it'll slide right in there. It'd be held up with those keys. Flip this thing over. And again, snug that one down real nice and snug. And that's it. That's how you set up your gases. So watch out for those. When these tanks are shipped to you, when these tanks are shipped to you, they're going to come with a rubber, uh, a plastic clip over the top of this hole with a plastic seal. If ever you do lose these little rubber seals and you ship one off or you lose one of these little rubber seals, well, you can use that plastic seal. That plastic seal is going to require that, require that you tighten it down nice and tight. It's a one-time use. When you call to get your gases, ask them to drop off some washers at the same time. So that's basic set up the nitrous unit. And I hope this video helps you out. And bring some smiles to a lot of young children out there. Thank you for watching.